Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. The supermodel and mogul Tyra Banks did an interview with Wall Street Journal and she reflected on the feud that she had with supermodel Naomi Campbell. Yeah, I, I had a very painful early days in Paris. Um, as much as I was booking every single fashion show, people didn't know I was going home at night crying my eyes out because the woman that I was looking up to seemed like she just didn't want me to be there and was doing everything in her power to make me go away. And I didn't understand that as a young girl. Like, why is she doing this? This is so evil. This is so awful. The adult me understands that she was reacting to an industry that was all about a token. When this one girl, Kate Moss, came on the scene, they weren't telling Christy Turlington, you better look out, Kate Moss has got some tie cheekbones like you do, Christy. When Shalom Harlow came on the scene, they weren't, Lindy Evangelista, look out, another brunette is on the loose. But when I came on the scene, <laughs> Naomi, look out, there's a black girl that's going to take your spot. Because there's only one spot available. Only one spot available. This was a very interesting statement that Tyra made, and it's not the first time that she talked about Naomi Campbell and the tension she had with her, but she basically said that the modeling industry was intentionally trying to pit two women of color against each other. And that happens so often, not only in the modeling industry, but in the entertainment industry, the sports industry, the music industry, you name it. There have been so many feuds and unfortunately, Naomi Campbell and Tyra Banks bought into the feud that was created from other messy people within the modeling industry. Yeah. Tyra was dubbed the new Naomi Campbell. They both had really pretty eyes and, you know, pretty skin, and they were, you know, they, they were African-American. And I think at first, it probably was a compliment. You know, she was young. Naomi was already established. Naomi Campbell, who's one of the three top supermodels in the world, was the African-American model in most of the major shows, whether it was Versace or Chanel. She almost always closed the show. The press tried to ignite a feud between the established supermodel and the newcomer. I was told stories of Naomi and Tyra having fights over dresses and over which one would come out last on the runway. The designers notoriously have a rack for each model, their name and their clothes. And Naomi came over and um, wanted to wear one of the outfits that they'd chosen for Tyra and moved it to her own rack. Naomi treated Tyra as she would any other rival model. Publicly, Campbell denied any bad feelings toward Banks and both women spoke out against the prejudice in the business. What's sad is that the industry perpetrates like uh, a, pre a preconceived notion of divide and conquer. You know, like there's only one top black model and that's Naomi. It's hard because in order for me to be successful, they, the, the unspoken rule is that I have to kick somebody out. And it does bug me and irk me that you think that two, go two women of the same ilk where women of color have to be pitted against each other. And that's something I always felt back then. You can have more than one woman of color in a fashion show. Unfortunately, back then it was like, okay, we'll just have one. So the other one would feel like, oh, she put me out. Oh, look out, Naomi Campbell. Here comes Tyra Banks. So Naomi Campbell, sit your butt down. This younger one is coming to take your place. And it was really unfair to her. You know, it, it wasn't fair to Naomi, uh, but her response was, to this day, I'm very scared of her. But, um, how, how was that response? Oh, it was, I, don't, I don't want to go too deep into the past, but it was, it was very difficult. Very, very, like some of the lowest times of, of my life. I do want to break down what happened between Tyra and Naomi. And I first want to talk about the success that Naomi had. Now, Naomi Campbell first started really getting recognition in the late 80s, and she skyrocketed to supermodel status in the early 90s. And she was one of the biggest supermodels in the world at that time. She was on the cover of so many different magazines, including Vogue. She starred in music videos. She was in commercials. She was one of the most popular models on the runway. She definitely had the baddest catwalk of all time. She was stunning. She was fierce. She was just the hottest model in the fashion industry. And I say all of this to create a picture of who Naomi Campbell really was in her prime. Now, a few years later, another young model creeped up on the scene. And this model was Tyra Banks. 
Tyra Banks did her first major fashion shows in Paris and she was an instant hit. She booked 25 shows in her first runway season, which was a really big deal. Photographers and designers loved her look and in a way they kind of made her out to look like another Naomi Campbell. Not only that, they were kind of propping her up to compete with Naomi. And Tyra Banks at that point was really young and really starry eyed and she idolized Naomi Campbell. So when she heard of these comparisons, she was actually flattered by it. However, Naomi did not appreciate the comparisons at all. And this is where the tension between Naomi and Tyra really began. People were talking in Naomi's ear, telling her that Tyra was the new girl coming to take her spot. Now, Naomi worked hard to be in the position that she was in, and I can imagine some of the things that she dealt with being the only black supermodel in the industry. So the fact that the people around her were feeding into her insecurities and telling her that she was going to be replaced made her feel some type of way. And unfortunately, she directed her animosity towards Tyra. I don't know if you remember, do you remember the Azadine Alaya fashion show? Yeah, that we did when together? we had the braids. Yes. Yeah, I we remember, the and the little white frilly things. Yeah, yes. I remember so you remember well. that fashion yeah, yeah. show? And I called my aunt, I said, she's right behind me. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She's right here. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Just, just a couple of weeks ago, I was at home looking at her pictures, and now I'm in a fashion show with her. <laughs> but Naomi, do you remember what you said to me? That's now, I want you to awful and cruel. Awful. What did I say? You said, I heard you talking about me. Which I do. I hear word. everything from everywhere. Yes. No, but no, you said you heard me physically. You were right behind me. You right. heard me talking about you. You called me a, the B word. Uh -huh. And you said, and we have a photo shoot to do in Anguilla. And it's not going to be pleasant if, I, if you're talking about me like that. I probably did and say that. Why did you say that? Because I probably just heard the tail end or just thought it must be negative. Which yeah. it wasn't negative. So now it's something yeah. new. So I'm really sorry. That was upsetting. Naomi Campbell did go on the Tyra Banks show and they both discussed their feud in detail. The tension between them grew after they did a photo shoot for US Vogue in Anguilla. When I started to become a fashion model, I never tried to look like no, you. but that's how they, they made. That, there yeah. was a certain look, you know, yeah. there was a certain look. You were the only one, you're the only black girl. Make every black girl's hair look like that. Make every black girl's makeup like that. Um, and then we went on that trip. We went on that trip in to Anguilla. Anguilla. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I remember being on a boat and I get seasick. So I was laying down on this uh, little plank thing. Uh, yeah, well, that boat shot there. I was laying down on a plank. I'm mean, laying down on a pillow. Yeah. And you came and you sat down next to me. And you, you, I think you let me put my head in your lap or you, or you put my, my feet on your lap. Right. And you're like, sweetie, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, actually, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then you said, I have to ask you something. Right. See, I remember this because I was so new and young. You said, I have to ask you something. Do they try to make you look like me? Right. And I said, um, I don't know about so much now, but in LA, yeah, they really did with the little short I think black I wigs. That. And you stuff. told me that, yeah. Yes. I and Naomi, you got up, pushed me away, and said, yeah, I thought so. And you turned. I did. You went from the sweetest woman that was giving me vitamins to someone that terrified me on that trip. Oh my God. And understandable, I, I can understand. I was told on that trip that I was sent home because you didn't want me there anymore. So no, I didn't that's finish not that trip. True. That's what I was told. I don't have the power of Anna Winter. There are some specific things that I remember as if it was yesterday that hurt me and hurt me to my core. Do you remember that photo? Do yeah, remember I remember. That? I remember that photo because we didn't say one word to each other. It was after the thing that happened on the boat. Right. And it looks like we're just chilling and talking, but if you see there, you can, I feel the ice in that picture because I remember it like it was yesterday. I that don't remember. You don't remember? There I was remember no, only about the... There was no communication. I went from calling my mom, mm -hmm. like, you know, saying, oh my gosh, she's so amazing, to calling her going, I don't know what happened. Right. We just did a photo. She didn't speak to me. Like, I don't remember. I remember just with you. I remember you telling me about the wigs. I don't remember anything else. You don't remember anything else? Anything else? But I remember that the end of that trip was not very... It was very cold. We did a fashion show. I don't remember what it was. It might have been Jenny or something like that in Milan. And we were doing that fashion show backstage. And you came up to me right when I was about to walk out. And you said something. And it's so funny because it was so surreal at the time when you said it. I didn't think that you could actually say something like that. What did I say? You said, 
something like, you'll never be me, don't ever think that you'll be me, and something I like that. I said that? Yes. I know the person that I am, mm -hmm. and I'm not someone to go and give myself away and say that to anybody. I've never said that in my life. So, but if that's what you remember, yeah. I accept that, but it's not, it doesn't sound like me to people that would know me. That experience between you and I was one of the most difficult times in my entire life. But don't you think some of the things are like blown up a little bit? When I would read the press, they'd be like, but this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a fight on the runway. This, I mean, it really was yes. blown up out of proportion. No, most definitely. It was definitely blown up and perpetuated. But there, to me, there are certain things in the press that come from nothing. And then there are certain things that come from truth. I was tired of having to deal with you. I was tired of that pain. I was tired of the comparison. I was tired of constantly hearing that I got canceled from this job or this or that or this photographer was called or this magazine was mm -hmm. called and, and was telling to not use me. Mm -hmm. So I made a conscious decision and I said, you know what? I'm tired. I'm so tired of this. To be honest, Naomi, I'm fearful of you to this day. Not right now. I feel safe. I feel like it's just me and you. There's not a lot of hoopla. Right. But even a couple of seasons ago, even a couple of years ago, when we did the Victoria's Secret fashion show, and I walk in the room and I see you, I'm like, I start shaking. My heart starts beating faster. I go back to the 17-year-old girl yeah, that, you used to be. that I used to be when this powerful, strong icon woman that I looked up to was terrorizing me. So you heard in that interview, Tara was basically expressing to Naomi how she felt when Naomi was basically bullying her. And once again, it wasn't just Naomi, it was the industry itself. There were times when fashion directors only wanted to use one black supermodel, and most of the time they chose Naomi Campbell over Tyra Banks. So Tyra did get frustrated with the industry itself. Not only that, she got frustrated with the industry's emphasis on her weight. There was a point in Tyra's career where she started getting curvier, and a lot of times in the high fashion industry, that's not really embraced. So Tyra Banks ended up quitting modeling for a little while to pursue other ventures. And it actually ended up being the best decision for her because she established herself as a mogul outside of modeling. She had her own hit show called America's Next Top Model, which became a huge success. Also, she had her own talk show at one point, which was also very successful. On top of that, she got into acting. So Tara was able to branch off and do other things outside of modeling. But even with all of her success, she still had some unresolved issues with Naomi Campbell. So Tara decided to invite Naomi Campbell on her show and have a heart to heart with her. And Naomi did apologize to Tara. Um. However I've affected you, or have you felt that I've affected you, I take my responsibility. I just want to say I'm very proud of you for being a powerful black woman sitting here and doing what you're doing. And please continue. Okay, we... Thank you so much. I'm very proud of Tyra, what she's done with America's Next Top Model, which is now all over the world, is a great achievement. She should be extremely proud. I'm proud of her, I'm proud to know her. And I'm not into the, um, the pitting game. It's really refreshing to see Naomi and Tyra put their differences aside. However, when the feud between Naomi and Tyra is brought up, oftentimes Naomi is looked at as the villain because of how she reacted. But I do want to kind of humanize Naomi just a little bit because the feud for her was deeper than pettiness and jealousy. There is a clear agenda from the fashion industry to pit these two black models against each other and that agenda was rooted in racism and colorism if we're going to be really honest. Tyra is a great model but most would argue that she's not the model that Naomi is. Still, they wanted to replace Naomi with Tyra. Now you have to ask yourself, why is that? Why can't there be room for them both? Why does there have to be competition? Well, let's be honest. There were probably some people in the industry who felt more comfortable with Tyra's aesthetic than Naomi's aesthetic. Tyra had fair skin and light eyes, and they were probably more comfortable with that instead of a brown skin bombshell like Naomi Campbell. Because let's be honest again, there are some people who are threatened by beautiful dark skinned women, but that's a whole nother topic in itself. 
but it's possible that these are some things that Naomi was internalizing. She was not only dealing with her position being threatened in the industry, she also had some unresolved issues from her childhood. And if something bothered her, a lot of times her way to respond to certain situations was through anger. There's a lot of issues that I have from childhood. Tell me about that. Well, for instance, not knowing, not knowing your father, not seeing your mother, that brings up a lot of, it manifests, manifests a lot of feelings. One anger. of those feelings, absolutely, anger. But I think that's a really normal thing. And I mean, I didn't, I've not always displayed my anger in the appropriate or time. It's always been in the unappropriate time. But um, it's a manifestation of a deeper issue, I think, anger. And that for me, I think, is based on insecurity, self-esteem, and loneliness. And um, being abandoned. Being abandoned. That's what I mean. That's what my core issues are, abandonment and rejection. And, um, and that puts me in a real vulnerable space. And everyone thinks, oh, Naomi's a really tough girl and really strong. But that's what I want to appear to people to be like. Because I fear that if I don't, they're going to just walk all over me if they really knew how I was. I just wanted to give that insight about Naomi Campbell. Even though I don't condone what she did to Tyra, there were other external factors that were kind of playing into the feud that she had with Tyra. She came up in a very competitive industry and she had to really fight for her position. She had to fight for her success and break down barriers in the fashion world. And she did not do it by being a sweetheart or a pushover. She had to be tough. And I think Naomi's toughness and her advocacy for inclusiveness really did open doors for women of color who would come up after her. And I can say the same thing for Tyra Banks. Both Naomi and Tyra are two of my favorite supermodels and they have really changed the fashion game a lot. I can't even imagine how the modeling industry would be without a Tyra Banks or a Naomi Campbell. In my opinion, they are two of some of the most important models in history. And also, they're iconic. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!